Good day and welcome back. Glad to have you. Now, um, we're going to start talking about um, looking at multiple views, how do you write complex applications. So far, our to-do application is pretty simple. We said it was going to be a simple application, but it, it just uses one page or one view, right? We have the form at the top and the list in it below. What if we kind of wanted to separate those so we have one for page for or one view for the form, like an edit view, and then we add another view, for like a listing view. And then we can go on and have other views also, you know, maybe um, we could have like a profile page, an account page, a sign-off page, a login page. All these are just different views. And so we need to be able to understand how to um, handle multiple pages or views. And so we're going to start off though by kind of reviewing how we load multiple pages with the anchor tag or the, um, the hyperlink tag. Um, when we start talking about HTML. And then we're going to start talking about why we just going to review some of the things I said just about why we want multiple views and then how single page application, um, that's what we're using right now, is this um, Angular is, a single, is one example of a single page application framework. There are many, Embers, Backbone, and so on, Spine. So um, we're going to see how the single page applications of today um, think about multiple pages and, and something they call they tend to call a route. All right, so let's get into it. As I said before, um, the way we our call kind of the old way, uh, the way we we thought about linking pages or loading multiple pages was to use this anchor tag, right? The a tag, uh, or you can call it the hyperlink tag. And we'd say here is the href, the attribute, and set it to point to either page that we have. Um, sitting on our server or some other page somewhere else or another website or something any, any of those work and then some text and you click on the text and it takes you and it loads that page um, the important thing there to realize is when you click the text whatever you get back from the web server replaces the um, text that you're currently looking at right so it doesn't replace a part of the page it's like the full um, client area um, document area for the browser gets replaced and so there was no way really to, uh, to replace like a partial page. Let's say you had an application and you had a header and footer and you wanted that to stay the same, but you only wanted the middle part to be replaced. There was no way to really do that with this, um, just the anchor tag alone. No, there's some JavaScript code that you can use that even when you click the anchor tag, you tie it to a button and you get the event handler and then you have to do something. Angular and the modern frameworks hide all this for us. And what they do, they're gonna still go fetch the page but they're gonna replace just a part of your um, client area if you like, if that's what you want. And we'll see more of this. But first, let's just kind of go back and look and see how we use the A tag. Uh, in this simple example, I have a page um, with three hypertext link, um, home, page one, page two. And as I click them, you're gonna see I'm loading actually different pages, which you can see from in the uh, HTML code you actually see there that the H refers to actual pages, like example that's zero one that HTML for home and example zero one dash page one that HTML for page one and so on, right? Uh, the only thing uh, else I have in this in this app, um, simple thing is on line six, I'm using uh, external style sheet, but that doesn't change. All the examples are going to use that, and I just kind of wanted to highlight certain parts of the page, that's why I use the style sheet and take away the white background and use a gray type background. Anyway, but other than that, it's not very complicated and that's how we um, used to load multiple pages, right? And this would still kind of work in Angular if we really tried to use it, but there's a better way. So let's kind of go and look and see some of the things we might want to do. As I said before, um, the new way in our uh, linking um, or having multiple views allows not only to use like the hyperlink tag and buttons or any type of events, um, but you're gonna see that uh, we can switch and show multiple pages much easier than we could um, the other way. The other benefit is, the number, but one of them is that you're gonna be able to replace part, replace part of the display area without replacing the entire display area. And this is a much smoother and nicer transition for the user who's using your application. And it also means that you, you don't have to keep bringing down uh, the same set of content. So in our previous example, we had to refetch all the header and all this stuff on every, all those three pages. 
even though we only had like one line that was changing. And you can see when we do the routing here the new way, we can be able to just abstract out um, the thing that's changing. And so, as I said before, um, when we think about a view, what we really want to imagine is that there's this view that's being provided with some model data that it's going to use to populate the view. And the controller is the one who kind of gets your data and provide it, get some contact your model, get some data, and make it available to the view. And in Angular in particular, this is done using the scope um, variable. But our application so far, it doesn't uh, only have one view, but the reason we're talking about this is because we're saying that you can write more complex application with multiple views. And so you'd want to kind of replicate this idea of view controller accessing the model. Now the model have to, don't have to change. You might have the same model. I could imagine like Excel, for example, if you know Excel spreadsheet, where the view could be the data as a spreadsheet or the data as a graph, but is the same data. All right. So one of the things you can, once you start thinking about multiple views of the same data, um, or even different views, for example, in your application, then you start thinking about, can I have views for different type of devices, right? So if somebody's accessing my application from a browser, how might that data be represented um, differently than if it was accessed on a, like a mobile device or a TV or something? Uh, even though we're still talking about the same type of data, right? In this case, um, the listing. And so you can still use the, con the same controller because it's the same data you're displaying, it's just you're displaying it differently appropriate for that device. So because of all these flexibility of mix, matching, mix and matching um, views with you know, controller and so on, and use, reusing the controller, reusing the views and so on, um, you can even go the other way. You can have two different controllers. So imagine I had a controller that pulled up user data, another one that pulled up more data for administrator, depending on if that's the user, um, I could still use the same view, but when the view is provided with data from the user controller, it's just rendering less data. And when it's provided with data from the admin controller, it renders more data. So you can mix match multiple views with the same controller or multiple, or one view with multiple controllers, right? Just an, just an example. Um, so this is the kind of flexibility we get from going to the new style of representing views and so on in the single page applications. Now, one of the ways to think about um, a particular view and controller going together, or um, let's say we marry the idea of a view and a controller that goes together, is to call that a route. And that's sort of like how Angular treats it. You define this thing called a route, and you say, okay, which template am I supposed to use to render this view, and which controller is going to provide the data. And with those two things, you can create more and more routes. So every route is going to be template and the corresponding controller. Now remember, I'm using template here and views interchangeably, right? Um, so that's what a route is. And so once we could create different routes, now we can just change routes and Angular would render different views for us. And so we're going to see that in code, just so you do that um, right now in the next example. Okay, so remember we said that a route in AngularJS or any one of the modern um, single page web application framework is the combination of a page and uh, or a template and the controller. Of course, the controller provides the model. So let's look at this example. So you can see here, this very simple example. And all I have is um, this ID container div and I have ng view. That's a new directive. I have my Angular to do application, which matches with the module. And then the new thing is on line 19, uh, you see I have ng wrote. Now, ng wrote comes from this inclusion of this script, which matches the Angular um, thing, except that it's now ng dash, um, Angular dash wrote. So that's another module. And before our Angular modules didn't take uh, use any other modules, so this array was empty, but that's the purpose for it. Now, you know, you can see that this array specifies all the other modules that you can depend on. So you can build your application using multiple modules. And a module is exactly what we've created, and so we can include our to-do app module in another application. Anyway, ng route uh, module will give us a route provider variable, this dollar sign route provider. 
So you say in Angular, I want you to configure with this function. And so Angular, we're going to provide an anonymous function, and Angular is going to call it, and it's going to look at what our fu function expects, which is dollar sign road provider. And it's going to inject that. Now, we haven't talked much about dependency injection, but it basically means that if you depend or want something to use, Angular knows how to inject it. And so on the road provider function, we can call that when and that otherwise. Those are the two, one of the two, two of the functions that um, road provider um, has. And for when, we can say when the road is slash. Now, where's the road? You notice here in the URL, there's this pound forward slash. Well, that forward slash that come after the pound, that's the road. And so it's like forward slash page one. And so if you click on page one, you'll see pound page one. And page two is the same thing. You'll see pong page two, or if it's home, it's just pong slash. So that's, that's our route, whatever comes after the pong sign. And so we say, when the route is that, I want you to show the template to display is that. And of course, um, otherwise, if it's anything else, like when we type three here, for example, page three, it goes back to slash because we're saying anything other than what we've de defined, um, it should go back to the, to the root route, which is slash, right? Um, so slash route. And so, so slash become like our default route. And the, our template is just some string in this case, right? We, we just specify some string. And this is unlike what we were doing before when we actually had um, links to actual individual pages. Now we just have these routes. And so for anchor tags, what we can say is href is, you know, pong forward slash or pong forward or whatever as appropriate, right? So you do put the pong in front of the route name when you specify in the URL, but when you define the route itself, you leave off the pong. And so ng route is actually going to say, okay, depending on the route and what template I have to render, I'm going to substitute it in the body of the div, the, the HTML element that has ng view. So whichever element, you could use a paragraph tag if you like, and put the ng view on it, and Angular will just substitute that text with um, you know, uh, the contents of whatever the road template is. In our previous example, we were looking at just using templates, um, text. So, but we can actually specify an HTML file. And in this case, it's called template URL. And so notice if our road here, when we said a road to slash, we say template URL, and we specify this file example, that's your tree dash home that HTML. If we look at the content of um, this file, um, um, you'll see that it just contained the text we want, okay? Unlike when we did it before with the, using the old style, we have to sub provide a full HTML just because we want to replace the entire page. Here, we just, remember, we're just going to substitute whatever is in this template URL into that div that has the ng view. So we really don't have to sub supply the entire HTML because that's the only part that's going to be replaced, right? Hopefully, you start seeing the benefit of this. So nothing else has changed. Our anchor tags didn't have to change. The only difference was going from template to template URL. And instead of providing a string, we used um, the HTML file. Now, if you look at this example, um, what we want to do is go back to using controllers with our template URL. So um, we defined some controllers. And now inside of our um, text file, we're going to set out these, each one of these templates uses the specified controller, page one, home, etc. And our controller here is just going to provide a username for home. For page one, we're going to use the interval um, function that Angular provides, and we're going to update a Kong by one every second. And um, page two um, controller is going to do the same thing, except it's going to increment by 10. Okay. So nothing too fancy, um, very simple. And the only thing now we have to do is look at our template files. And as you can see for home controller, for example, we're gonna be specifying a user um, value, a variable, um, true or model. So we're gonna say, hello, username, welcome. So we should expect to see like, hello, user X, for example. Um, and then for um, the page one, we should be seeing our thing come by one, and page two would be come by 10. Um, so let's kind of look at that example and make sure that that's what we're going to um, see happen when we run the, the code, right? So we kind of need to select it here and then go over here. And now 
you can see when we click one, we say home user outcome. If we go to page one, we see it's counting by one um, because that controller is providing that counter value. And if we click on page two, we're going to see it count by 10. So we can see again here that oh, we can still specify our controller with um, our template. All right. And this is sort of like how we were using the template before when we put the controller directly in the template and say, oh, this controller operates across this div, right? Encloses this div. So nothing new here. However, we can do better. What if we actually want to put the controller, mix match controllers and template, as we saw in the slide before, we might actually want to have used the same template with different controller providing the model value, because maybe the the controller for a user might pull up a different set of uh, listing than, let's say, records than for admin. Or we want to do it the other way. We want to use the same control and have different views depending if the person is connecting with a mobile device or, you know, um, a web browser. And you can see here, we could specify the controller directly in the route. So we can say, because that's what we said before, a route was a template and a controller anyway, right? That's what we said before, and now we're finally here where we're showing that how you can say, this is my template to use, and this is the controller that I want to go along with it. And Angle is going to make sure that if you try to specify, let's say, a road um, page two, that it reads that template, example 05-page two, and then instantiate page two controller and make that available, the model provided by page two controller, make that available. So we could go ahead and specify another road here, page three, and we could say use um, the same um, controller, page two controller, but use template one. And we should see a mismatch because page one template says Kong by one, but the controller we're using is actually going to try and Kong by 10, right? So here we go, uh, we're Kong by one, page one, page two, Kong by 10. Now we, don't, we didn't put an IPO link for page three, but we can type it in anyway, even if we didn't put a link, we could just type it in. So we said three, enter, and now we'll see it says count by one, but notice how the value is going up. It's counting by 10. That's because we can mismatch, mix and match templates and controller, right? So this is the one advantage that you can do. Whereas before you couldn't do that because when your controller was specified directly in the template itself, how can you override it? You, you couldn't. So um, this gives you that flexibility of just mixing and matching a number of different templates and controller, right? And so I hope this kind of illustrates the power of the new style of Lincoln. And um, you guys are pretty excited about it. And just see how really cool Angular is and the sort of thing that it's allowing us to do. Um, let's, let's wrap up before this gets too long. It's already pretty long. So we saw how to load multiple pages the whole way. And we saw the new way with routes. In the next episode, we're going to talk about services. But maybe one of the things we want to do is start thinking about how can we use this idea of multiple pages with our existing um, application? Can we still enhance our application more so we have one view for editing and adding tasks and another view to just listing? And that way we'll have more space for listing and of course more space for doing editing. And you know we have two clearly separate um, views for different type of tasks, right? And that sort of thing gives you the ability to say, well, I can start putting permissions. And so maybe some people are allowed to add, it, add, add tasks and edit them, or some people can only add tasks only, and some people can't list them, can't see them, and, and those sort of things, right? And whose tasks can you see? So this is an example, again, where you could have one controller that pulls up only your task and show it to you rendering the list in view, or another controller that pulls up everybody else's task, right? So again, thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Spread the word. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.